All right, guys, it's time for the uh, big bore review you've all been waiting for. Got a lot of questions, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through it. But first of all, before I start, I have another project planned for this bike. So this channel isn't monetized or anything, but you should subscribe if you want to see it. It's going to be pretty cool. So it's coming up maybe three weeks. Got to wait for parts. Uh, first, uh, some things I did after the big bore uh, kit. Replaced the uh, battery with a lithium battery. Uh, total weight reduction on this bike is about 35 pounds right now and 31 of that was with the battery and the exhaust alone. Uh, I moved my license plate to the rear of the bike because uh, the license plate holder I was using was actually blocking the tick marks that you use for wheel alignment in the back and I just didn't like that. It wasn't good so it's a little more functional. I may get a different side hanger for the license plate here that hooks on to uh, where the exhaust hooks onto, but uh, that's in the future. Uh, I removed the passenger foot pegs and I raised the front handlebars a little bit, uh, or the front, it just felt like the uh, geometry was off a little bit. As I applied more power, I just noticed it was a little more pogo y in the front than I liked, so I shifted a little bit of weight to the back by uh, putting the handlebars back at stock. Uh, I still have the clip ons, they're still low because, because it's clip ons, but. It just, uh, it just didn't feel quite right, so. Um, so now on to the, uh, review. First of all, the, uh, the break-in. Um, I used break-in oil until about 200 miles. Uh, the first 50 miles, I stayed under 3,500 RPMs. The next 50, I stayed under 4,250 RPMs. The next 50 miles, I was mainly under 5, with some runs over 6K. And... From 150 on, 150 miles on, I started doing higher RPMs and bursts. And at about 200 uh, miles, I changed back to silkaline from the break-in oil. And I started riding like I would ride it. I didn't do any highway. I just rode it around, uh, you know, my area, the burbs, you know, and back streets like I would ride it normally. Uh, you've got to vary the RPM a lot uh, during the break-in period. You don't want to keep it pegged for a real long time because uh, when you let off the gas, that's when oil comes back up into the cylinder, from what I understand. So you want to do that a lot while you're breaking it in. So uh, the things that were changed, the tires, first of all, uh, they're stiffer. They pound my butt a little bit more when I'm riding. I can definitely tell that they're different tires. I got more confidence using them. They look way better, and they're actually on the bike. They're the same weight as the other tires. Uh, I didn't mention it uh, in the earlier video when I put them on, but I weighed them with the rubber on the wheels, uh, both sets, the old set and the new set. And on the new set, the rear tire's a little bit heavier, but the front tire's a little bit lighter. So I'll go figure, and it came out to almost exactly the same weight. So there was uh, not a weight increase there. Uh, the Diablo full exhaust is quite loud. It sounds pretty good. I like it. Uh, one thing you got to remember is if you get the Diablo uh, full pipes, the pipes on this are have a wider diameter, so you can't use standard slip-ons with them. So you kind of have to buy their slip-ons. Um, for the, cl the clutch, the clutch feels pretty close to the old clutch. I adjusted it a few times, you know, while I was breaking in. Uh, I I've, I had, Adjusted it as recently as you know, a few days ago. It seems like with the weather the clutch cable kind of changes a little bit And so if you're getting like uh, if you're getting hard to get in neutrals and hard gear shifts uh, Just something I picked up after doing this is it you might just need to adjust your clutch a little bit more It, it seems to be somewhat variable with the weather um, The heat of the bike uh, I have a temperature gauge installed on the engine, and it is about the same as it was. I, I didn't notice any heat increase with the big bore kit, so it's about the same. And you know, it's like a little, uh, like an oil temperature oil cap. So I don't know how accurate it is, but it's going to the, it's indexing the same numbers pretty much. So okay, so that brings us down to the interesting part. There were some things that di I didn't like when I was done. So. First of all, the Hitchcock's map that I got with uh, Power Commander 6. You now the gas mileage was 50 miles to the gallon, and I was getting 40 before I did the upgrade, and I'm like, that's not right. Like, how is this getting 20% better gas mileage when it should be, like, sucking down more gas? And, uh, and so that was kind of a, you know, a red flag. And, uh, <clears throat> 
So I went over it around a little bit and it seemed not super, like a super improvement. It seemed about the same really as with the plug and a slip on and the DNA of air filter. It was maybe a little bit better than that, but it wasn't like, you know, people say it's gonna be a wheelie machine and all that stuff. It wasn't that, so. So what I did is I, I assumed that the, the map was wrong. So I, I sent it, I downloaded it, sent it to Hitchcock and said, is this right? Because when I look at also when I looked at it, I bought the editing tool and it was all zeroed out. Like there was no, there were no changes in the map at all. I'm like, is this right? What's going on with this? And uh, they even went back and said, yeah, because they're a vendor and it's Power Commander 6, I can't see their changes. Okay, and then I did more research and realized that Power Commander 6 was just locked down. Like as an end user, you can't even really make a map. You can't really do anything. So all you can do is add 15% to each cell. So I got their map. I can't verify what's in it. They're telling me it's okay, but it's not running great. And like, it's not torquey. It's not, like, not what I was expecting. There was not the power increase. So I went through and I just like, well, let me try some things. So I put 5% in every cell, uploaded it, it got a little bit better. Added 10% to every cell. Uh, it got a little more torque, a little bit better. And then I added 15% uh, to every cell, which is the most you can do with the Power Commander 6. It's totally locked down. And uh, it didn't really get any better than 10%. But I'm like, you know, it was still not what I was expecting. I'm like, this this isn't uh, what I want. There's gotta be more. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to end this project with telling people, hey, you know what, guess what, you gotta go to a dyno and get your power commander tuned uh, correctly to, uh, to how you want it, because no one wants to do that. You just want it to be done, right? You wanna put a power commander, put in the right map, and have it pretty close to, you know, as good as it's gonna get. So, I decided to uh, look around, and there was Revelry Racing has a map for the power commander 5. And I could see, I bought that thinking I could make a Power Commander 6 map out of it, like just copy the numbers over to a Power Commander 6 map. But when I found out I couldn't even make a map of Power Commander 6, I was like, okay, well, time to buy a Power Commander 5. So for science, I bought a Power Commander 5, took out the Power Commander 6, put on the Revelry Racing map, and uh, uh, that was better. That was definitely a, uh, a better experience. It was what I was looking for, so. Um, with the Rebel Race Racing map, um, uh, the max torque they say drops down to mid three Ks, which with the uh, which is lower than the than the Hitchcock's map, and yeah, I could feel that. It was like it was definitely second gear was super fun. It was like really slide me back in the seat, and it was really uh, really torquey. Third gear was really good. I would say my butt dyno tells me it was a 50 to 75% uh, increase um, over stock, whereas the Hitchcock's map was maybe 15 to 20 max increase. So I would say if you can get a Power Commander 5 and get the Revelry Racing map, do that it, but uh, whenever I look for a power commander 5 it always says this for like 2019 or 2020 Royal Enfield Continental GT's and interceptors so if you can get someone to say it, it'll work fine with the later model which I don't know why I wouldn't I would definitely go with power commander 5 it's not locked down you can do whatever you want to it I may even go back and add some percentages to what I have now just to see what happens also make sure with these power commanders either one that you get uh, make sure that you uh, adjust your throttle. There's a calibration in this Power Commander software. Make sure you calibrate your throttle. It's a real simple process. There's a bunch of videos already on the internet on how to uh, adjust, calibrate your throttle for uh, Power Commander 5, Power Commander 6. Make sure you do that, otherwise the map won't work. It won't line up with the correct inputs and stuff. So you want, like, the cells on the map won't be at the right RPMs and stuff like that. So after that, I realized, uh, so once I had the uh, Rover Racing map in there, I started doing zero, zero to 60s, and I'm gonna give you all those times here in a minute. Um, and I realized, like first gear was just like instant red line on this bike, like with that map. It was, it was it bucked a little, like you had, you had to be careful going out from first gear on that one. And uh, so you immediately red line, you shift the second, your second pull is really good, pull it really hard, but it doesn't get you to 60 miles an hour. So you gotta do another shift 
like just before 60, like it, probably 56 or 55 miles an hour because you hit the rev limiter. And I'm like, well, if I didn't have to do that extra shift, I would be able to cut my time down. And also first gear is, is worthless. It's just basically immediate red line. So I decided to get a 16 tooth sprocket. And I'm like, you're saying, dude, like, how's that gonna make you faster? You know, like what kind of crazy person thinks a 16 tooth front sprocket, which is going to make your gears taller and lower your torque, how is that gonna make you faster? Well, my thinking is the end, I got the engine upgrade. So first gear, I can make that taller. Second gear, I can make it taller. And maybe I only have to shift in the third to get into a, to get into a, the 60 mile an hour range. And then maybe, maybe this engine can just push it and it'll increase my times. So <clears throat> I went to Hitchcock's website, found out they sold 17 tooth sprocket, front sprockets. I'm like, well, it's 16. This part of the plane is 17. That's gotta be better, right? So, so I got that. Got the 17 tooth. I actually got both of them. I'm like, I'll just put the 17 in first because they're only like 25 bucks, right? So I'm like, okay, I'll just get both. And, uh, and when I did that, that my plan actually worked. So first gear became usable and it was, it wasn't like, you know, crazy torque, but it was, it pulled longer and harder. So if that makes sense. And then second gear took me all the way over 60 miles an hour. So I got my best zero to 60 times with that 17 tooth front sprocket. It's just the engine just needed to be geared that way. And also 17 tooth sprocket, that's the cool thing about it. I can like cruise at 65 miles an hour in fourth gear at 4,600 RPMs or so. So it's, it increased the capabilities of the bike. Like as far as usability, you know, it's just, it's a smoother riding bike. I don't know like it's how to say it's more, it seems more, more useful. And the 060 did improve, so. Um, also, uh, another thing that happened, when I put the Power Commander 6 in, when I did my first 0 to 60s, I did get an O2 sensor error. And uh, I didn't know it was an O2 sensor error, I just got like a, a warning light on the bike. I'm like, oh crap, what's that? So, I, got, I went home, I sent away for a, uh, air, uh, one of the error readers from Hitchcock's, it was only like 50 bucks showed up, it said it was no two sensor error, and there's like no O2 sensors on this bike. So they're not installed anymore. So I went ahead and reseated the plug for the O2 sensor blanking, and I cleared the error, and it never came back. So I was like, well, that's cool. And then when I put the Power Commander 5 in, the exact same thing happened. I got the error one time, and it never happened again. I had to clear it again. So I don't know if that is uh, a Power Commander thing or what, but so. You might want to invest in one of those air clearing um, items. So, <clears throat> um, I'll give you my 60 or 60 times now. So, in stock, in stock, uh, Royal Enfield advertises a 5.5 second 0 to 60, but <clears throat> that's not a thing. Like, you see people on the internet doing 0 to 60, it's like the best they're getting is like 6.5, like realistically. And so, with the Hitchcock's map in, I was getting a, uh, 5.6 second, 0 to 60. So that was a pretty, that was probably a one second increase over what people really get with, with stock. And I was also getting 50 miles to the gallon. With the Revelry Racing map, I got it down to 5.1 seconds, 0 to 60. And my gas mileage dropped down to 33 miles per gallon. So that was about, that was about what I was expecting with the big bore kit. And then with the uh, rubber racing map and the 17 tooth front sprocket, I got it down to, I got my zero 60 down to 4.6 seconds. So that was another half second off. And I, the last time I checked, I was getting about 37 miles to the gallon, but I don't have a whole lot of data on that right now. So, so, uh, that's where I'm at with that. I will, uh, in the comments section of the, or not comments, with the description of this video, I'm gonna put in a chart of what all the sprocket changes uh, based on a front 15 tooth sprocket and a 38 tooth rear sprocket. Uh, all the torque and top end changes you can expect to see. I'll put that in the description. And I will also put links to the other items I bought. The Power Commander 5 map, uh, the diagnostic scanner, and a 17 tooth front sprocket. And I'll put my 0 to 60 times. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, some video I was able to take 
of me riding around. Uh, there'll be, there's going to be some zero to sixty runs right after this, and they are going to be with the Revelry Racing map, but not the not the new front sprocket. So the best one you're going to see is going to be right around five seconds, um, and then. After that, there's going to be some video of me riding around with the 17 2 sprocket in. And uh, I do I actually hit 100 miles an hour in fifth gear on this pretty easily. So, yeah, it seems like, uh, I don't know if you ever, like, tried to run up to 100, like, that 90 to 100 or starts to struggle. Uh, with the 17 2 sprocket, it's kind of like, it's not, that's not there. Like, over 100, it seemed like maybe it was struggling, but I mean, I didn't, like, keep going. I don't know what the top end is on this. I don't want to keep doing zero to sixties and top end all the time. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not broken yet. Right. So, but we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll try and get film of a zero to 60 with the, uh, 17 tooth sprocket and the, and the, uh, rubber racing map. So go ahead and, uh, hook you up with those videos and, uh, hope you have a good one. Remember there is another video coming in a few weeks that you're going to really want to see. So, all right, thanks guys.